Have you ever wondered why some struggle with low testosterone despite leading a relatively healthy lifestyle? The answer lies in understanding the difference between primary and secondary low testosterone. These two conditions definitely share similar overlapping symptoms, but their cause and treatments are going to be much different. My name is Dr. Taranella, and this channel is dedicated to helping you optimize your health and body using science and my own clinical insights. Today's video, we're going to break down the key difference between primary and secondary low testosterone. We're going to explore what causes each and discuss the implications for treating each of these as well and getting to the root cause of your low testosterone. So if you're getting a lot out of these videos and want to continue getting videos like this one, hit the like and subscribe button to continue getting these videos. All right, let's jump into the video. So when we're trying to understand the difference between primary versus secondary low testosterone or hypogonadism, first thing we want to understand or define is what is low testosterone or hypogonadism to begin with. And when we look at that, we want to look at that from the perspective of symptoms and also laboratory metrics. Both need to be present in order for us to think that you're going to have good enough reason to pursue testosterone replacement therapy, meaning there needs to be some benefits that you're going to gain. You don't just put someone on testosterone replacement because their lab values are low. There should be a perceived benefit, whether you have symptoms or low testosterone, or once you go on it, you're noticing some improvement. And so when, we, when it comes to symptoms of hypogonadism, those are pretty well defined and you can look those up, but just mention a few of them here, like fatigue, low energy, lack of motivation, decreased muscle mass, inability to gain muscle, despite trying, putting a good effort into working out and consistent effort there, as well as problems with erectile function or decreased libido. These are all common symptoms of low testosterone. And on the lab metric side of it, you're going to see a testosterone value in the range of 450 or less. And that's in nanograms per deciliter. So then we get into the different types of hypogonadism. We have primary hypogonadism versus secondary hypogonadism. And primary low testosterone or primary hypogonadism occurs when the testes themselves fail to make adequate amounts of testosterone. And this can happen for various reasons, but the Leydig cells in the testes are not performing the way that they should. And this can happen from some kind of damage to those Leydig cells, like hereditary hemochromatosis can cause damage to the Leydig cells or there could be some other birth defects going on there with the Leydig cells. And then sometimes over time, it's common for those Leydig cells to start to decrease the responsiveness to the luteinizing hormone coming from the brain. So there's plenty of stimulus there, but they're just no longer responding. This is common as we get older to have this primary type of hypogonadism. There are also things like Kleinfelter syndrome, physical injury to the testes, some kind of blunt force trauma or Chemotherapy, radiation can also damage the Leydig cells and the testicular tissue, leading to that lack of responsiveness. And this type of hypogonadism is common when you get to older age for males when you're 50 plus, I would say. And 50 isn't necessarily that old, but the older you get, the more likely you're going to have the primary type of hypogonadism. That being said, I do have many men that are in their 60s that have more of a secondary hypogonadism picture, which we're going to get into here in a minute. So when we're looking at identifying whether or not you have primary or secondary, it really comes down to the amount of testosterone that you're producing and the amount of luteinizing hormone that you're producing. So in cases like this, typically you're going to have a low testosterone as defined by what I said previously, 400 to 450 nanograms per deciliter or less. And you're also going to have a high or high normal luteinizing hormone. Now, you may have one test result that shows elevated luteinizing hormone and low testosterone, but you want to do this on multiple occasions. That's going to give you the clearest idea of what's going on there because sometimes you can have a spike in the luteinizing hormone for various reasons, and in the next time you check it, it goes down. But if you have consistently elevated luteinizing hormone in the presence of low testosterone, you could be assured that you have more of a primary gonadism going on. And in this case, treatment options are going to be limited more to testosterone replacement therapy, meaning that the testes are basically putting out as much as they can, and there's not a lot of other options in terms of getting your body to produce more testosterone. Now, in cases of things like hereditary hemochromatosis or some sort of damage to the testes, you may be able to recoup some of that if it's been short-lived. 
and you remove, and in the case of hemochromatosis, remove that iron. If this has been going on for many, many years, now chances are you're not going to be able to recoup the production of testosterone in the Leydig cells. So you're going to be looking at topical creams, injections, pills, or pellets for your testosterone replacement therapy. In some cases, you may be able to increase the amount of testosterone produced in the testes themselves by focusing on general lifestyle interventions like more exercise, lifting heavy weights, improving diet, and things like that. But I would say, generally speaking, those types of things are going to work better in someone that has secondary hypogonadism. And we'll discuss the different treatment options like creams, injections, etc. in another video, and we'll go into much more detail on some of the pros and cons of the different methodologies. So now let's look at secondary hypogonadism. So secondary hypogonadism is basically the opposite of primary, and the problem originates not in the testes, but in the brain itself. Specifically in the hypothalamus or pituitary gland is failing to produce the stimulus or appropriate stimulus or hormones to the testes. And so you may not be getting enough gonadotropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus, or you may not be getting enough nizing hormone from the pituitary. And these signals are needed in order to stimulate the testes to make testosterone. And so if you're not having enough of that, what could be causing that? What are some of the common reasons for that? Well, common causes of the brain not producing enough luteinizing hormone have to do with stress and both physical stress and psychological stress. So when you have physical stress, it's going to be things like inflammation, anything that kind of drives more of an inflammatory process in our bodies, which there are lots of things to consider there, could potentially lead to some interference with the signaling in the brain, in the hypothalamus and the pituitary. And then cortisol itself, poor sleep in and of itself, independent of high cortisol, can also reduce the amount of luteinizing hormone that's being produced, which normally is produced at night. And so sleep is one of the big factors to focus on there. In the category of inflammation and things that can increase inflammation would be things like metabolic syndrome, obesity, toxins like endocrine disrupting chemicals, alcohol, and certain medications can also interfere with the regulation of hormones at the pituitary gland. These would include opiate type of medications and also a lot of mood stabilizers like lamictal, Depakote, and things like that will reduce the luteinizing hormone output. Should also mention too that pituitary tumors like a prolactinoma would also likely cause some reduction of luteinizing hormone and therefore low testosterone symptoms and low testosterone state. The symptom onset for secondary hypogonad really can happen at any age. And I would say the vast majority of younger males with low testosterone are happening from a secondary hypogonadism source. And while we lay out a lot of causes here and ways that you can improve your testosterone or improve the signal from the brain, it's not always as easy as it sounds. The lab results for secondary hypogonadism are going to look similar in terms of the testosterone to primary. The main difference is going to be that luteinizing hormone in this case is going to be low. You may also have higher prolactin, which in that case would be suggestive of a pituitary tumor called a prolactinoma. So treatment in this case could definitely focus on removing any lifestyle factors that may be influencing the luteinizing hormone or the hypothalamic pituitary testicular access. And things like metabolic syndrome and obesity are strongly associated with secondary hypogonadism, and it's likely due to the excess body fat on hormone regulation. So that's why we see a lot of times when we're doing more exercise, eating right, and things like that, we do see a, a steady increase in the testosterone levels. Focusing on exercise is going to give you better sleep as well, which will also help reduce stress levels, and you may get just overall better luteinizing hormone production. Of course, the lifestyle measurements are always good to introduce, but they sometimes take a lot longer and give lackluster results, since there are other medical interventions that you can use if you are finding yourself in the secondary hypogonadism scenario, and that would be things like Clomid or N-Clomachine. Both of these medications work by tricking the brain into thinking that there's not enough estrogen being produced by the body, and estrogen comes from testosterone. So it's really a signal that your body is getting testosterone or not getting testosterone. In the Clomid and N-Clomaphene basically block the brain's perception of this. And with that, the brain to produce more luteinizing hormone because it thinks it's not getting enough. When you do that, the testes get stimulated, testosterone levels go up. Now, these medications are definitely not approved for low testosterone. They're mainly used for fertility, 
and the N-clomiphene is not even approved here in the U.S. for anything, according to the FDA, but it is still used here quite often, and the N-clomiphene seems to have a more direct effect on improving the luteinizing hormone, more specific effect at doing that versus the clomiphene has a more general body effect on blocking the estrogen receptors. And when you introduce either one of these two, you're also going to get an increased production of follicle stimulating hormone. And that's in both the increase in follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone are going to give you improved fertility as well. When you have secondary hypogonadism and use one of these treatment options, it's going to allow you to have much more control over starting and stopping because your levels aren't going to go down as much when you're on these products. And when you go on one of these medications like enclomiphene or clomiphene, you're going to have a much, much improved fertility as well. So you have to be mindful of that. If that's what you're looking for, great. The other thing we should mention is that when you go on these medications like clomiphene or enclomiphene, you have a little bit of advantage in terms of how your body's going to handle coming off of it. So if you want to go on for a short period of time, it's going to be a little bit easier transition when you stop those meds versus if you're on testosterone replacement therapy. So it's a little bit more, even though the medications are synthetic, somewhat more natural way because you're encouraging your body to do the work. Now, as I mentioned earlier with secondary hypogonadism, it's important to try to find out what the cause might be and to intervene with sleep lifestyle modifications and things like that, because I've seen in my practice where levels can definitely come up just from taking those right steps, taking those action steps to do the things that you know you probably already know you should be doing, like eating better, less carbs, maybe losing 5, 10 pounds, depending on where you're at, and also lifting heavier weights to help encourage your body to make more testosterone. This is going to be a much more sustainable way to get your body moving in the right direction but it's not the right move for everyone. And so that's why I wanted to lay out some of the other options here, but especially for younger men, when you're looking at your testosterone, feeling tired, thinking you might need to be on testosterone, these other options here are gonna be much safer, much better for you than going on testosterone replacement therapy. And the lifestyle factors are much encouraged because you still have the rest of your life ahead of you. And if you've really given these ideas a good effort and you're still not getting the results that you expect, we well, always have these other options to fall back on. Now, I wanted to mention too that there are a lot of other topics on testosterone replacement therapy. And if you want to learn more about how to manage your testosterone replacement therapy or whether or not you should start with some of the side effects might be, check out our playlist on testosterone replacement therapy. You'll see a lot of topics there that may be of interest to you if you want to go a little bit deeper on any of these specific things. But hopefully this video gives you a better understanding of the difference between primary and secondary low testosterone, aka hypogonadism. If you do have any questions about anything in this video, definitely drop those in the comment section. If you want a more detailed, customized answer, consider joining the membership program. That's my way of being able to dedicate a little bit more time and attention to the questions you might have. And either way, I'll try and answer your question. Now, one question you might have after watching this video is, what are the pros and cons of the different testosterone replacement therapy products that are available? You can find information on that video, right? Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.